right now is what you
Tony Mariora. Today I have a message I have titled Grace to Overcome Hardship. If you have a good Bible, let's open our Bibles briefly to the book of 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 1 to 5. You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that you heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. And also if anyone competes in athletics, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. Let's pray. Father, we just want to thank you for the entrance of your word that's got the power to transform our lives and destinies. I pray that as the word comes, let it come to take people to new dimensions of faith and glory and let God's people say Amen. What does it mean to endure? To endure means to remain firm under suffering or misfortune without yielding. The gospel that we have today is not a gospel for cowards. It's not a gospel for those people who think that life is all about some easy stuff that's not the gospel the bible makes it clear that the way to heaven is a narrow path which is full of thorns and adversity and the bible also makes it clear that many are the afflictions of the righteous but god delivers him from them all the gospel we have received was facilitated by the hard work dedication and sacrifices of faithful men and women of god who use the sweat and blood to fuel worldwide revivals and reformation. Therefore, it is now a spiritual responsibility to take the message of Jesus Christ to the next level. Your knowledge of the scriptures through the grace of God can turn your hardship to victory. No matter what you're going through, know that there are people who have gone ahead of you. I know that the whole world is stressed right now because of the crisis we're facing, Tough times don't last, but prayerful people do. Tough times don't last, but optimistic people do. The Bible makes me understand in the book of Matthew chapter 11 verse 12, and from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. When you know that your destiny and the destiny of those God has given to you are tied to the actions and the decisions you take then you have to fight fight until the purpose of god in your life is 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 made manifest fight until something happens pray until you have the ability to turn situations around because life is not a joke it could be fun but it, it is not a joke because everything 
that pertains to life and godliness is under assault. Institutions of the world are under assault. Governments of the world are under assault. Economies of the world is under assault. The health of nations is under assault. Your personal health is under assault. What are you going to do? Are you just going to sit there and say, you know, I'm a victim? That's not how you win. You win by declaring the word of God. You win by declaring victory. You win by going out and telling the devil that you have no power over me. The Bible tells me, resist the devil and he'll flee from you. I speak to nations of the world. Don't give up. We are about to confront and defeat and overcome this virus because God's word makes it clear that as many that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God, and the sons of God have the power to declare things. The Bible makes it clear that whatever two of you agree on earth as touching anything will be made manifest in heaven. There are millions of believers worldwide praying and i want you to know that god's not dead god is still alive god is going to make us see victory just hold on don't give up because something is about to happen if you check the bible in the book of acts chapter 14 verse 22 strengthening the souls of the disciples exhorting them to continue in the faith and saying we must through many tribulations enter the kingdom of god the ticket to entering the kingdom of god is through trials and tribulations if you think that you're going through trials, it is nothing compared to the glory. It is nothing compared to the victory. It is nothing compared to the testimony that awaits you. Maybe there's someone at home right now and you're feeling tired and down and out. But I came to tell you, don't give up because something is about to happen. We win when we fight. We win when we confess victory. We win when we stay hopeful. We win knowing that God is able to complete that which is started in your life life. The path to God's kingdom is turbulent. You need faith to navigate the storms, conviction to continue the fight, vision to embrace the promises, and endurance to claim the prize. What is your goal? Or what are your goals? What do you intend to finish this year? What do you intend to do this year? Do not allow the devil to define you. Do not allow pain to define you. Do not allow crisis to define you. We are defined by the word of God. We are defined by the purpose of God. We are defined by the will of God. Because God who called you, God who created you, told me to tell you that his plans for you are plans of good and not of evil to prosper you and to give you an expected end. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 11 to 12 tells me, and we desire that each one of you show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end that you do not become sluggish. Tell your neighbor, say don't get sluggish. This is not the time for you to become sluggish. And we desire that each one of you show the same diligence through the full assurance of hope until the end, that you do not become sluggish but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Think of Abraham, think of Samson, think of Gideon, think of Apostle Paul, think of Peter. Think of those who through faith and patience inherited the promises. They didn't inherit the promises by crying at home and sitting at home and complaining. They inherited the promises by speaking the word of God. Keep speaking the word of God. But you may say, but Bishop, I've been praying and nothing seems to be happening. Keep praying because something is happening in the spirit realm and you just do not know it. The Bible makes it clear that we cannot give up and we have to declare and we have to keep declaring. We have to keep the declaring we must imitate those who through faith and patience inherited the promises you there are many things god has spoken concerning you don't give up claim them faith tells you that god's gonna do it patience tells you wait for god to do it we're in a period where we're waiting we know it's a done deal that the coronavirus has been defeated but just wait for the victory to be made manifest in the air trend. I speak to nations of the world. America, you are free. Europe, you are free. Asia, you are free. Africa, you are free. Australia, you are free. Antarctica, you are free. North America, South America, you are free to the glory of God. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 7 tells me, Remember those who rule over you, who have spoken the word of God to you. 
will faith follow considering the outcome of the conduct? If you think you have no faith, look unto the patriarchs and matriarchs of the Bible. Look unto men and women who through faith and patience subdued kingdoms. They wrought righteousness. They quenched the fiery darts of the enemy. They brought the dead back to life. Consider the outcome. Consider the prayer of your pastors and bishops and the men of God and women of God that God's put over your life to help you in the journey of destiny. 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 11 to 12 tells me, But you, O man of God, flee these things and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. The fight of faith is not useless. The fight of faith is not hopeless. The fight of faith is a declaration of victory even before the battle began. That is the fight of faith. We ain't the one fighting. It is God. Jesus has finished the work. All you need to do is to step into that victory because we are modern conquerors. The Bible tells me in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 25, And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now they do eat to obtain a perishable crown, but we for an imperishable crown. Think of the nation's lives of people who are not yet saved. Think of the things that God has called you to do. Do not succumb to sickness. Do not succumb to fear. Rise up to the needs of the hour because the Bible makes it clear that the entire creation waits for the manifestation of the sons of God. Sons of God in America, hear the voice of this man of God and begin to rise up to the needs of the hour. Pray until something happens. Let the sons of God in Europe, in Africa, in all parts of the world begin to stand in the gap let the sons of God in the Philippines rise up to the needs of the hour victory is setting because the Bible tells me with men this is impossible but with God all things are possible rise up to the need we will defeat this virus we will defeat poverty we will defeat fear we will conquer death because the Bible tells me so if you believe that shout hallelujah the Bible tells me in the book of Luke chapter 13 verse 24 strive to enter through the narrow gate for many I say to you will seek to enter and will not be able the narrow gate is for warriors the narrow gate is for sons of God the narrow gate is for those who know, know how to fight the Bible makes me understand that those who know that God shall be strong and they shall do great exploits it is time for you to rise up to the needs of the hour you may not be responsible for your trials but you have the power to turn your pain to gain true faith courage mental discipline and god's grace you can win over this battle you will triumph over this battle you will overcome if you believe that shout hallelujah the bible tells me in the book of psalm 34 verse 18 to 19 the lord is near to those who have a broken heart and save such as have a contrite spirit many are the afflictions of the righteous but the lord delivers him out of them all god is going to deliver you from sickness god is going to deliver you from fear god is going to deliver you from poverty god is going to deliver you from all your worries if you believe that it is your time to shine ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 tells me now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us the power that works in you is the power of an overcomer the power that works through you is the power of a champion the power that works for you is the power of god there is a power of god that works in you that can subdue sickness and subdue fear rise up to the needs of the hour as we begin to declare the word of god all your dreams the purpose of god in your life will be made manifest just keep declaring victory is coming your way if you believe that say this is my time Within you lies the power to attract your desired outcome in every adversity. The law of attraction is simply prevailing faith facilitated by divine favor. Grace does not prevent you from encountering crisis, but gives you the ability to overcome the pain of trials with the assurance of victory. Do you recognize the grace of God in your life? 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. 
And he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. What are you without God's grace? Think of God's grace, how good God's been to you. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10. But by the grace of God I am what I am, and his grace toward me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Every believer has grace for the race. A man's character is molded by adversity, his faith revealed by uncertainty, while the capacity of his convictions are tested by trials. You never know the true nature of a person until that person experiences trials. Proverbs chapter 24 verse 10. If you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. What you do when you tested reveals who you are. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 3. For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. Don't be discouraged. Luke chapter 9 verse 62. But Jesus said to him, No one having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. The kingdom agenda must always come first. Don't think of the things you're going through. Anything you go through for God's glory will be something that will be beneficial in your spiritual journey. When you're going through crisis, soldiers during the times of war, they don't behave like civilians. They get themselves dressed up. They put on armor. They put on things. They're armed and dangerous because they're trained. You're a soldier. For you to win this battle, there's something you need to do as reflected in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11 to 13. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Have you done all? You can't stand when you've done nothing. You have to do all in order to stand against temptations of our time, against the trials, against pain, against hostility, against all the wiles of the evil one. Your attitude during adversity will determine your altitude in life. A positive mental attitude of gratitude is the key to victory. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17 to 18. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do we praise God for crisis? No, but you can praise God in the midst of the crisis you're going through. Look at Daniel. In the midst of adversity, he didn't complain. He didn't say, okay, I'm not going to do anything. He went simply to his house and he began to praise God and pray. What the devil wants you to do is to sit at home and do nothing. Go back home. As you are at home, don't forget the fact that you are a believer and every believer is a receiver. Daniel chapter 6 verse 10. And when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went home. And in his upper room, with his windows open toward Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as was his custom since early days. Do not allow the crisis of the coronavirus to destroy your Christian custom and practice. Don't allow it to define your faith. You have to take a defiant stand against the wickedness of this virus. The way to do that is to make sure that your relationship with God grows and continues to grow. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 20 Giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Give thanks. In the midst of the pain, give thanks. Psalm 34 verse 1 I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. You don't praise God only when it's good. 
You don't praise God only when it's convenient. You don't say, I'm going to praise God sometimes. No, praise God all the time. Paul and Silas had preached a glorious message and what did they get in return? They were beaten and thrown into jail. But because they knew that God at night, as reflected in Acts chapter 16, 25 to 34, they woke up and began to praise God. And God moved. God moved mightily that the chains and the chains of all the prisoners were broken. This is what happens when you praise God. Not only are you released from bondage, all those who are around you automatically are released. The apostles did great things too. As reflected in Acts chapter 5 verse 40 to 42, And when they had called the apostles and beaten them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. So they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. And daily in the temple and in every house, they did not cease teaching and preaching Jesus as the Christ. Don't tell me that because of the lockdown, you cannot preach the gospel, or you cannot pray, or you cannot read your Bible. That's not what we do. The more the enemy tries to put us down, the more we rise up to the needs of the hour. Wherever you are, preach the gospel. Use your social media to preach the gospel. There is no distance in the spirit realm. We may be separated by time. We may be separated by distance, but we are all connected by spirit. We are all sons of God. I speak to my brothers and sisters all over the nations. It is your time to shine. You will overcome and you will testify to God's glory. If you check the book of Daniel chapter 3, verse 17 to 18, if that is the case, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us from your hand, O king. But if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the gold image which you have set up. That's the mind of a champion. The Hebrew boy said, no matter what you do, we will not bow and we will not burn. They did not bow to pressure and they did not burn. When you do not bow to pressure, you will not burn. Why does God permit hardship? Now, people are wondering, why did God allow this thing to happen? There are some reasons why I know that God allows hardship. One, to draw us close to him. Psalm 107, verse 12 to 13. Therefore he brought down their heart with labor. They fell down and there was none to help. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble and he saved them out of their distresses. So sometimes if God thinks or sometimes if God feels that you are getting distant from him, he allows this to happen so that we can go back to him. Secondly, to determine whether we love him. Exodus chapter 20, verse 20. And Moses said to the people, do not fear, for God has come to test you, and that his fear may be before you, so that you may not sin. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 2. And you shall remember that the Lord your God led you all the way these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you and test you to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandment or not. Now, during this crisis, are you going to turn away from the faith or turn to the faith? The choice is yours. Deuteronomy chapter 13, verse 3 to 4. And you shall not listen to the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams. For the Lord your God is testing you to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul. You shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice. You shall serve him and hold fast to him. What you do in times of crisis will reveal your level of conviction. 3. To make us learn his word. It is good for me that I have been afflicted that I may learn your statutes. Psalm 119 verse 71. 4. To teach us obedience so that we can understand his will. Hebrews 5 8. 
Though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. There are some believers who will learn nothing until they encounter storms and crises. First Peter chapter 4 verse 1 to 2 Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourself also with the same mind. For he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh for the lust of men, but for the will of God. 5. To prune and make us more productive. You see, if you've lived in, in an agrarian society, you discover that if a farmer wants to make sure that the tree produces more, the farmer begins to prune the tree. And the pruning process is usually very painful. So whatever God is aligning in your life right now, ultimately it's going to work out for your own good. John chapter 15, verse 2. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. So God is aligning you to go through the fire so that you can comfort refined as a worthy gold. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. Therefore purge out the old living that you may be a new loan, since you truly are unliving. For indeed Christ, our Passover, was sacrificed for us. 2 Timothy 2.21 Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. God has allowed this thing to happen so that true men and women of God will be prepared for the good work ahead. 6. To purify us as precious and efficient vessels. Malachi 3.3 He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. He will purify the sons of Levi and push them as gold and silver, that they may offer to the Lord an offering in righteousness. God allows Christ sometimes to purify us. I believe that God is shaking the planet and shaking nations so that the spirit of righteousness will flow like an ever-flowing stream from the north to the east, from the west to the south. I believe the time for God's righteousness to flow has come upon the nations and the righteousness of God is going to flow all the way from Africa, Asia, Europe, Australia, North America, South America, Antarctica, so that the sons of God, those he has called, will begin to manifest in righteousness. Zechariah 13 verse 9, I'll bring the one third through the fire. We refine them as silver is refined and test them as gold is tested. They will call on my name and I'll answer them. I'll say, this is my people and each one we say the Lord is my God. You see, the church, whatever is happening right now, I see in the spirit realm that a new order has been established. God has allowed it so that only that which is tangible will stand. God has allowed it so that only that which is godly will remain. God has allowed it so that his true sons and daughters will begin to manifest as sons and daughters of God. Isaiah chapter 48 verse 10. Behold, I have refined you, but not as silver. I have tested you in the furnace of affliction. Your suffering, your present suffering is nothing compared to the glory that God has prepared for you. 1 Peter 1.7 That the genuineness of your faith be much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So whatever you are going through right now ultimately will be for God's glory and for your own growth. 7. To make us humble and prepare us for his sovereign plan and the subsequent blessings. Deuteronomy 8.16 Who fed you in the wilderness with manna, which your fathers did not know, that he might humble you and that he might test you? To do you good in the end. Ultimately, all things, that's what the Bible tells me, work for the good of those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. 2 Corinthians 12, 6-7 
For though I might desire to boast, I will not be a fool, for I will speak the truth. But I refrain, lest anyone should think of me above what he sees me to be or hears from me, and lest I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelation a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to perfect me, lest I be exalted above measure. 8. To teach us patience. James 1, 3-4 Knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience, but let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Another reason God allows trials or adversity in the lives of believers is nine to teach us divine wisdom. Proverbs 21 verse 11 When a mocker is punished, the simple gain wisdom. By paying attention to the wise, they gain knowledge. Ecclesiastes 7, 3-4 Frustration is better than laughter. Because a sad face is good for the heart. The heart of the wise is in the house of mourning, but the heart of fools is in the house of pleasure. Proverbs 22 verse 15 Foolishness is bound up in the heart of a child. The road of correction will drive it far from him. I believe that every kind of foolishness we've manifested by God's glory as we enter the new season wisdom will be found in the house of God. Then finally, 10. To teach us compassion towards other people. You know, sometimes we don't know what it means to be broke. And so we look down on people who are broke. Or we look down on people who are sick. And we say, you're, you're broke because this happened to you. But look at what has happened all over the world. The richest nations are in debt. Economies of nations destroyed, from the U.S. to Japan, Germany, Australia, Italy, you name it, China. All the wealthy nations of the world are in crisis. What does that tell you? Because of the crisis, the best in humanity is beginning to emerge. People are sending money to, to others. Rich people are donating. So God sometimes allows us to go through trials so that we can know what it means to be in somebody's position. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15 For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are yet without sin. We have a high priest who knows what it means to be human. So sometimes God allows these things to happen so that we can learn how to be human and also to pray for those who are going through crisis. You know, one of the greatest things that happened in my ministry is to experience some very difficult times. And my sufferings did not make me bitter. My suffering made me better. I know what it means to lose loved ones. I know what it means to go through lack. I know what it means to go through adversity. And that's why I understand your pain. But don't allow your pain to define you. Jesus loves you. God loves you. And you will overcome this present darkness. In conclusion, 2 Corinthians 1.4 Who comforts us in all our tribulation that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. You were saved to save. You were comforted to comfort. You were blessed to bless others. So it's time for you to reach out to someone who's in need. Use this opportunity to do some good and glorify God. Help some people who don't have food. Help some people who don't have money. Comfort those who are in distress. Pray for those who have needs. And above all, Tell them that there is a loving, compassionate Savior who loves them. Today, I lift all the nations of the world before God and I pray. Father, your word tells us that if we call upon the name of Jesus, we shall be saved. Today, I join faith with believers worldwide praying and calling upon your name. And I address you, virus, 
whatever name you call yourself, coronavirus, I rebuke you. You will no longer terrorize governments of the world. You will no longer terrorize economies of the world. You will no longer terrorize lives. You've taken lives. Today, I bring an end to your reign of terror. I bind you and I rebuke you and I declare that your power over the nations of the world is over. Get out of the streets of US. Get off the street of Manila. Get off the streets of Nigeria. Get off the nations of the world. You are judged, you are found guilty, and you are bound. You will never manifest and take lives again. I declare peace all over nations of the world. In Jesus' name, Amen. God bless you. Hey team, we hope you enjoyed our online service. We would like to thank every single Kingdom Giver who has been faithful in helping us move forward even during this time of crisis. We continue to encourage you to give and help people who are in need. There are so many ways to give online. You can give through PayPal. Just scan the code on the screen and it will direct you to our giving page. Or you could also give through Gcash or Instapay. We love you team and we will continue to pray for you. If you are new to team, we welcome you. Together. Let's stand united because we can get through this. Stay blessed and safe and see you online this Sunday.